going to switch gears and talk about analytics for the next section. And when you think about ArcGIS and analytics, you've got a lot to think about from a historical GIS perspective. You know, take me for an example. Even at my age, fortunately, I'm able to remember commands in ArcInfo uh, glued together with AML. Any of you out there still? Uh, yeah, see? <laughs> we're, still, we're still doing it. And uh, Avenue and ArcView and, you know, the uh, emergence of geoprocessing tools that now over, no, number over 1,200 tools that you use in Model Builder or are scripted together um, using Python. You know, the exciting thing is for, for you to understand what analytics options you have now at your fingertips and looking forward uh, with ArcGIS. You know, um, whether that's uh, walking up to an interactive, ready-to-use analytic experience like Insights for ArcGIS or to a uh, very powerful desktop data science workstation that can access all of those geoprocessing tools and machine learning, or onto customized deep learning models that you can interface with with ArcGIS when you need them to. That's a lot of power for you as developers and a lot of options for you. So let's take a look at some examples of analytics options across that spectrum of ArcGIS, beginning with Art and Linda. There was once a wise man that said, data is important, but not as important as the answers it provides or the stories that it tells. He said this to a developer, and the developer responded, until I understand the data, the answers and the stories will have to wait. Now, we've all been there. Analysis starts with a question, and quite often, we don't know which question to ask. So we begin to explore the data, clean and structure it, enrich it, begin distilling it to discover that it becomes a very iterative process. All along the way, we begin to see the problem. We understand what can it answer. We find what's missing and identify the key stories. Some folks call this data wrangling, when in fact, it's really analysis as part of the data science process, ultimately giving us the answers or leading us towards the answers that we're after. Insights is a data, an is a data analytics tool powered by location, a self-service experience that allows you to work with all kinds of data, both spatial and non-spatial alike, enabling you to search for those answers or better yet, find those answers. And to work and Let's, let's actually see insights and ask Linda to work with insights to understand that data. OK. Linda? Thanks, Art. There are many organizations already using insights. And with seven releases in our first year, new features are rapidly being added. So I'd like to quickly go through an analysis using traffic accidents for fatal accidents across the US for one year's worth of data. Just to spice things up, I'm also adding in additional data that comes from many different data sources. So we can see that in 2016, we actually have over 30,000 accidents across the US in which there was at least one fatality involved. By adding in the vehicle miles traveled per capita, aggregating it up to state level, we can actually see the normalized results of those, and we can see that three states stand out with the most number of fatalities. That's Florida, Texas, and California. So let's have a look at California by just simply picking up the polygon for California and then filtering out those accidents that happened within that area. I can actually change this map type so I can better see the overall patterns within this data. So changing it to bins, you'll see I have the option to change the resolution. I can also change the point at which we transition into the individual features. Using the binning, we're actually using all of the data. So now you can see the overall pattern for all of the features, no matter how large your data set is. You'll see as I zoom in, it recalculates that dynamically until we eventually see the individual locations for these accidents. 
So let's take a look at California. The data that was collected for these fatal traffic accidents is actually stored in multiple different tables. So I want to take this data for the accidents, for the vehicles, and I want to join those two together based on the individual case number. I also want to take another table for the persons, and I want to join that to my vehicles, both on the case number, but also I need to create compound join to join this on the vehicle number. So now I have my three tables joined together, and I can start to analyze what we can see in all of this data. Dragging across the age, I can immediately create a histogram that shows us that young people are very often involved in fatal accidents. I can drag across the prior incidents to a table. This now shows me all of those people involved in a fatal accident if they've been involved in a prior incident in the past. I can also have a look at the pattern by hours of day as we break down all of the data automatically from the date. So dragging that across, I can create something called a stacked bar chart. This now shows me the pattern of accidents by hour of day, and we can see that there is significantly more fatal accidents later on in the evening and in the early mornings of the day. As I say, I broke this down by a second variable, and this shows us whether alcohol was involved in any of these accidents. You can see that I can filter on any of these, and all of the cards are automatically updated. But I can also add in the new functionality of cross-filtering. So in this case, rather than just selecting the data, it's actually going to automatically filter out all of those cards to show me just those events that I'm interested in exploring. So now we're seeing those patterns immediately updated, both on tables, charts, and on my map. Past research has also suggested that there may be some relationship with demographics. So perhaps in some areas, there's more fatalities and traffic accidents because certain populations may not be able to afford, for example, child restraints, or they may be driving older vehicles that have poor safety features. So we could have a look at the accident rate against education, income, and employment. Dragging four numeric variables, you see I can instantly get a scatter plot matrix. This allows me to explore multiple numeric variables and explore those relationships between them. If I want to dig into any one of these, it's simply a drag away. Of course, everything I'm doing within Insights is being recorded. So I have my models for each page. So I can look at what I've done. My workflow is being recorded for me. If I want to rerun this analysis, I can share my model out. I can share it to anyone else, and they can update it with their own data to rerun that analysis with a single click. So geography is also likely to be involved in the patterns of accidents, not just the demographics. And of course, we can explore all our work spatially. So there's one key feature about Insights that's a little bit different. We can actually store multiple shape fields in one data set. So in this data set, I have the XY coordinates of where accidents have occurred. I have the zip codes where those drivers actually live. Any of these features I can draw are whichever geography I choose to. But I can also take both of these shape columns and dragging them to a map, it will immediately create that link, that relationship between where the drivers actually live and where those accidents occurred. Zooming into the map, I can then start to explore perhaps the local patterns of what's happening by each of the zip code. Where are the accidents occurring? So Insights allows you to take data from multiple different data sources, join them all together, explore, 
and analyze your data to get your answers. Ah. That was awesome. Yeah? So, using insights to begin understanding your data is fast, simple, and easy to use.